This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about the story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 25, A Good Cause. Valerius brought up the tracking app on his phone that told him wherever Caden was, or at least where his phone was. He really should chip the damned innocent boy, but the phone tracking was the best he had for now. Caden was half a mile from him. Valerius pulled the hood of his long cloak up over his face. Though few people in reach, or really anywhere, had seen him in person, there was always the risk he could be recognized. And he needed to be incognito, especially considering where Caden was. Valerius had been right to be suspicious of Caden's behavior earlier, and the supposed thing Caden had to do before they went flying together. The young man was near where a human's first meeting was taking place. Even if Valerius hadn't been tracking Caden's phone, The Claw had eyes and ears on every one of their meetings. They especially noticed people hiding behind market stalls. Valerius tried not to roll his eyes at this amateur spy work. The real question was why Caden was spying on a human's first meeting at all. Caden must know something about the bombing he is not telling me. He is loyal to his friends to a fault. Could one of them be mixed up in this? Valerius wondered. There was a soft beep in his ear from the earpiece for the phone. He answered, It was Simi. The captain of the Claw was running this mission of watching humans first, very closely after the bombing. My king, Simi said. What is it? Cain's location hadn't changed since Simi had contacted Valerius about seeing the young man at the meeting. Jasper Hawes has shown up, my king, Simi informed him, his voice tight. Like most shifters, hell, like most people, Jasper was the human equivalent of an irritant in one shoe. And the swarm shifter that Caden befriended is with him. She's transformed into her spirit form. It looks like she's gathering intel. Valerius grunted. This is the first intelligent thing that they've done. We should question her. I believe that Wally is also present in his rat forms, my king, Simi added, though he kept himself out of sight from the beginning. He has a little more surveillance experience than the children, Valerius admitted. We may also have some information on why Caden is here. It's just a guess. Tell me, Simi. The young woman he works with. Simi paused as he must have confirmed the name, which he said. Landry Thicket. While she's dabbled online looking at anti-shifter propaganda. It's her brothers, Ross and Harvey, that have caught our attention before. The rumors are that they were behind the bonfires up in front of the courthouse and the burning effigies of the spirits. We couldn't confirm it, but we're pretty sure it was them. Jasper, paying a visit to their house the other night, also makes it clear that they have influence in humans first. Valerius' expression went grim. He had seen Cadence caring for this girl Landry. She had also been very loyal to Caden. But it was too dangerous for Caden to be friends with someone who had this close a tie to humans first. Not if Caden wanted to keep his identity a secret. Anything else, Simmy? Valerius's voice was clipped. Just that I have three people seated throughout the crowd. We've got eyes on Caden and Landry. And finally, Jasper's speech sucks. Simmy added the last with a twist of lemon in his voice. Valerius grinned. Not surprising. Are you... uh, are you headed towards the meeting, my king? Simmy asked tentatively. It was clear that his claw captain didn't think it was a good idea. But Caden was there, so Valerius was going to be there. Yes, I will be present. No one will see me, though, Valerius assured him. Of course not, my king. I will keep you informed of everything that's occurring, Simi said, masking his dismay at Valerius's plans relatively well. I'm sure. Valerius ended the call. He prowled through the night streets of the mid. He often did this incognito, feeling the mood of the populace without any filter. It reminded him of the days before the war, when he had been unknown except to a very few. Even other shifters had not known his name, his face, or were even sure of his existence. He had been a legend, until the existence of shifters had become a done deal, and things had gone to hell. 
Esme had told him afterwards that if he had taken his rightful place as leader of the shifters earlier, that the war might never have happened. She also stated that since he hadn't, he couldn't complain about it. Sit in the shadows and no one will see your scowling handsome face. Esme had actually squeezed one of his cheeks after she'd said that. Valerius had to actually believe that the war between humans and shifters had been bound to happen at some point. The moment humanity discovered the shifters, and the moment the shifters got to live openly, there was bound to be friction that led to violence. The current violence between humans first and the shifters showed that regardless of who was king, the nature of both sides was to fight. As king, he was only just able to tamp it down to bare embers, at least until now. And of course, Caden would be in the middle of this danger, Valerius thought. Valerius sped up his walk. He kept mostly to the shadows, his face deeply hidden within his cloak's hood, careful not to make eye contact with anyone. Those who did notice him kept a wide berth. He knew he was huge compared to most people, and the way he moved was predatory. Even if they couldn't articulate why, they knew he was dangerous and that they should best avoid him. Caden, however, hadn't acted like that at all once he'd gotten over the shock of meeting Valerius. The young man had gotten right up in Valerius' space and stayed there, smiling and cooing. Valerius shook his head. Caden had absolutely no sense of self-preservation. Thinking on that, he was glad that he had not left Caden's safety to the claw. They would not understand how foolish the young dragon shifter could be. The cobblestone streets were wet from being washed down after the market had closed for the night. He could still smell the remnants of fresh vegetables and fruit. There was a salty remnants of fish and rich remnants of blood from butchered meat. Raziel was enjoying the sense, as only in the human form could he get so close to human life. For Raziel, to be this small was often strange and annoying, but at other times, like now, he relished it. Valerius smelled Caden's unique scent before he caught sight of the young man. The wind was blowing towards him, and he picked up on all the scents of the clustered people, but his senses automatically zeroed in on Caden. He stepped off of the main road and into the maze of stalls. He moved between them silently. Not even Wally's rat forms would have twitched a whisker at his silent, stealthy tread. Caden certainly didn't until he was almost upon them. The young dragon shifter and Landry had their heads practically pressed together as they were peering over the top of a market stall towards the crowd of humans first and their speaker, Jasper Hawes. It was only at the last minute that Caden turned his head towards Valerius. He knew then that the young man's dragon spirit had alerted him. Caden's eyes grew almost cartoonishly wide. As he took in Valerius' approaching form, the Dragon King knew that he looked imposing. He had an all-black, black black pants, black boots, a black sleeveless shirt with a high neck, and finally the long black coat with the black hood. But Caden had no doubt who he was. The young man's lips parted as if to offer an excuse for clearly doing something he shouldn't. Caden blindly tapped Landry's shoulder and the young woman swung around. She almost screamed in response to seeing Valerius, but Caden slapped a hand over her mouth at the last moment. Valerius gestured for the two of them to come with him away from the human's first meeting, but Caden shook his head violently and gestured instead for Valerius to join them in their ridiculous spying mission. Valerius frowned and shook his head. Caden gave him that puppy dog expression. He could see the white dragon and was gazing at him and Raziel with a sweetness that shouldn't have been possible to express in a dragon's face. But there it was. Valerius clamped down on a sigh. Raziel was staring at the white dragon spirit with complete mystification. It occurred to Valerius that Raziel found this white dragon's behavior as mystifying as he did. That meant that he hadn't been wrong all these years about how dragons behaved and what those types of spirits sought in their human counterparts. But the white dragon completely upended those ideas. Realizing that Caden was not going to come unless he grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and dragged him away, Valerius crouched down and crab walked over to them. As soon as he reached Caden's side, he could feel the young man's body heat radiating against him. Caden was sweating and clearly excited, not to mention afraid, because of this daring adventure he had gotten himself into. 
He also likely was worried of Valerius' opinion of what he was doing. Or am I just deluding myself that he cares? Valerius wondered. I thought we agreed that you weren't going to do anything else stupid, Caden. Valerius growled low in his throat. The young man turned towards him, and there was a delicate pink to his cheeks. Actually, you were the one who talked, and I sort of stared at you and often disagreed. Then you swept out of the shop like you'd made a proclamation. You, Valerius scowled at him, temporarily made speechless. You should have agreed. It would be better for you to agree. I know you think that, but we're here for a good purpose, Caden assured him with that disconcerting earnestness. Valerius took in Landry's stiff-necked form and her frightened, darting glances over at him. While she had been afraid of him the night before, she had been brave because she wanted to save her friend. The fear he sensed coming off of her now, and the acrid scent of it, told him that this was an altogether different terror that held her still and rigid. You believe that Landry's brothers are behind the bombing, Valerius guessed. That had Caden's mouth popping open in an O of surprise. Landry curled into a tight ball. Valerius sighed. I cannot believe the two of you thought you could be spies when you fold so easily. I was guessing, by the way, but now I know that you believe that humans first and Landry's brothers are part of this mess. The question is, why do you believe this? Valerius asked them both. Before they could answer, Jasper Hawes's voice rose up at that moment in a fervent tone. For too long, we have been treated like second-class citizens in every city, town, and village of this great planet. Human beings created the society that shifters now rule. Valeria scowled. Humans never ruled. They only thought they did. The shifters were here all along, he thought. Hawes continued. How many of you fear about your children's future? As if shifters do not care about future generations, Valerius thought. Please. But Hawes went on. How many of you wonder if they'll be allowed to do any job above that of trash collector? There were roars of rage. Valerius saw, though, that Landry was still stiff, but there was something in her expression that told him she agreed with Hawes. I hope you are enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Now, you can tell I love Shifters, and Dragon's Reign was the first serial I had a whole world of them, all different types. But I've also done the more traditional Shifter tales involving werewolves, and one of those is a modern gay retelling of Little Red Riding Hood in my serial, Crimson. In Crimson, a lonely young man finds love in a werewolf pack. Gareth, Alpha of the Cold Moon Pack, does not believe in mates. His friend went mad after his mate was killed, so Gareth resists love. But then he meets Jude Connor. Growing up an orphan, Jude experienced human cruelty and trusts no one. Still, he dreams of belonging to someone and being part of a family. Can he bring himself to trust Gareth and the Cold Moon Pack and make that dream a reality? If you'd like to check out the first few chapters of Crimson for free, the link is down in the description below. Hawes put up a finger into the air as he listed off the ways humanity was limited. The law profession is completely taken over by raven shifters. The military and police are infested by werewolves and the big cat shifters. And while there are a sprinkling of human politicians, we all know that our democratic processes are nothing more than just a facade. Valerius's right eyebrow rose. You try dealing with President Goodfellow, Hawes, and tell me if you still feel that way, he thought. Hawes's voice rose up in a near yell, his voice reverberating over the microphone. The dragon shifters run everything! He leaned forward on the podium. If you think I'm exaggerating, consider what happened yesterday. Over a dozen people were killed in the below by Valerius, and yet, has he been held to account? Valerius winced. What Hawes said was, of course, true. How ironic that it mirrored Marban's words on the same subject. But it had been an accident, a terrible and tragic accident. Raziel's red eyes were hooded, but it said nothing. Valerius turned back to Caden and Landry. I know that you think you're helping a friend, Caden, and I'm sure you're trying to save your brothers, Landry. But if they are involved in making bombs, but they aren't, they can't be, Landry said, her voice clogged with tears and regret. I love my brothers. 
but they aren't that smart to make bombs. But they are smart enough to plant them, aren't they? Valerius pointed out. The bomb was planted by a shifter girl, remember? I told you. Or it was just a Landry knows a lot about who is in humans really first. And they don't let in kids, the let alone shifters. So she couldn't have been Landry's working for them, Caden pointed out. Maybe Landry's brothers just set off the smoke bombs. Valerius the diversion for the planting of the real bomb, Valerius you mean? Valerius looked critically at Caden. Caden winced I, I and just, lowered his head. I just, or or I it was know. just a coincidence. Caden Do you believe that? Valerius couldn't hide the disbelief in his tone. I don't know. I, I just, I just, I don't know. Caden hung his head. Valerius' gaze shifted towards Landry. Why do you know so much about humans first, Landry? Is it because you were intrigued by the idea yourself of human beings being on top? Or were you checking up on your brothers? How she answered this question would tell him quite a bit about her. She lowered her head and picked the seam of her pants. Both, I guess? She answered in the form of a question, but then firmed her voice and said, Both. But I was wrong. I, I know that now. But things just seem so desperate for human beings. You don't understand how it is, King Valerius. There are fewer and fewer types of jobs available to us. Jasper Hawes isn't wrong in what he says. Even Caden's dad has experienced that, and he was the head of his class at law school. Valerius looked over at Caden to confirm or deny that. Caden nodded his head. Dad's been saying it for years. He was just made partner as a token. All of his skill is ignored. But then again, even he admits, why would you want a human with at most 50 years of experience when you could have a shifter lawyer who has hundreds of years? The playing field is so uneven, but nobody wants to be given a hand up just because they're human. It is a problem. There are some things that shifters are simply better at that cannot be denied, Valerius answered with what he had thought was sympathy. Do you even know? Do you even hear how that sounds? Landry cried. It's so racist. Like, we can't be as good as shifters? I just don't believe that's true. It is not racist. Not as you were thinking, based on the ridiculous basis of the color of one's skin. Consider this. Who is better able to be a soldier? The werewolf who can run for days without tiring? Who can rip people in half with their bare hands? Who can heal from bullet wounds in moments? Or the human who can do none of those things? He posed to her. It was Caden who answered. In terms of simple physicality, the werewolf is clearly better, but the human might be more adept at planning or handling stress or who knows. Valeria shrugged. Perhaps that is true. But you must understand that it is not as if there are not real differences between shifters and humans. There are differences between shifter and shifter as well. Captain Simi is a snake shifter. Not exactly claw material, right? But you made him a captain, Caden pointed out. Valeria shrugged again, this time with a little less confidence. He didn't like the boxes that people were put in based on their shifter type. He chose people based on what they could do, what they had the heart to do. But he knew he was in the minority, and he didn't do it often if he were honest with himself. Humans were under a double prejudice, but the hate that Hawes spread was dangerous and didn't change anything for anyone. At that moment, Valerius heard soft footsteps coming towards their location. He turned his head and saw shadows approaching. Someone knew they were here. He grabbed both Caden and Landry and dragged them away from the stalls towards the back wall, where there was a makeshift wall with a chain-link door that led into a stinking alleyway. The trash from the market seller's stalls had not yet been picked up for the night. There were piles of rotting vegetables and bruised fruit overflowing the trash bins. Valerius put his back against the wall right by the chain link door. He gestured to the other two to be quiet. Landry was shaking like a leaf. The white dragon spirit was ready to come out to protect Caden. Raziel made a gesture with its one clawed arm for the other spirit to remain calm. The white dragon eased its tense position a little bit. Valerius strained his hearing and realized that there was more than one person following them. He leaned out to see a man and woman standing at the stalls where they had been hiding. The man said, Jason told me that he spotted two kids here. Where did they go? Maybe they heard us coming and took off. I don't understand why Jason was so concerned about two kids listening into a meeting open to the public. 
The woman answered with a wave of her hand. Curious kids come around the meetings all the time. Maybe they wanted to become members, but were too shy. Even if they were shifters, there were only two of them against all of us. You think shifters wouldn't try to get violence with us? Jasper is telling the truth out there. They better be afraid. They better want to take us out before we take them out, the man grunted. Valerius resisted the urge to roll his eyes. The woman asked, What about these two kids? Has Jason all worried? The man moved close to her, and though he was whispering, Valerius heard him loud and clear. The young man might be the white dragon shifter. Valerius's body went cold. Caden went rigid beside him. He had evidently heard the conversation, too. Landry was completely unaware, but staring at both of them curiously. Even though Valerius had never believed that Caden could keep who he was a secret for long, he had hoped that the young man's identity would remain quiet at least for a little while. He definitely didn't want humans first knowing who Caden was. How do they know? How do they know? The woman asked, clearly unimpressed with his intel. There's a video. Jason saw some of it. That's all I know, the man said. They know about the video, Valerius thought. This Jason saw it. We have a mole. The woman shrugged. Well, if the white dragon shifter was ever here, he's gone now. The two of them then wandered off. Valerius drew back and looked at Caden and Landry. I need to know everything the two of you do, and what your two shifter friends know and find out tonight as well. Caden's mouth fell open again. Don't look surprised, Caden. I know about Rose and Wally's participation in this little adventure. I am the king of this realm. Caden opened and shut his mouth, but then finally said, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but you are the first person in power I've ever met. I I mean, there's only one of you, Valerius. It's hard to... Caden's voice was cut off by a sudden and violent explosion. They were all knocked to the ground. Only Valerius mostly kept his feet and stopped the other two from being injured. The smell of blood and explosives filled Valerius's nose. He heard screams and shrieks and then moans. He immediately turned and looked out the slightly open door where the humans' first meeting had been. Smoke and flames and horror had taken its place. Someone had set off another bomb. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. Just a reminder that if you join Wraith Rain as a member, the membership is 15 to 20 episodes ahead of the free podcast. If you'd like to join and listen to all those extra podcasts, not to mention getting access to the other stories and manga on Wraith Rain, a link is down below.